Nosso foco total tá para eles, para gente representar bem o Brasil, que a gente sabe que eles merecem muito e a gente tá precisando de uma representação boa internacionalmente. Eu vou ver o que eu vou ver, mas eu vou ver o que eu vou ver. Eu acho que não vai acontecer, mas eu acho que 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 eu eu acho que a DFM também é um time muito cascudo, que tem muita experiência, então com certeza eles não vão deixar a partida acabar assim muito rápido, mas eu sinto que se a gente focar no nosso, jogar nosso jogo, a gente consegue ganhar deles. Eu acho que a gente não vai ganhar a DFM, mas eu acho que a DFM vai ganhar a DFM, mas eu acho que a DFM vai ganhar a DFM, mas eu acho que a DFM vai ganhar a DFM, mas eu acho que a DFM mình sẽ tập trung và có một cái tâm tâm thế là thoải mái nhất thôi thì như là đánh đánh trận em thua nhanh nhanh như thế là mình sẽ giành chiến thắng được. Nên sai just means like when the world is watching and you need to perform well. Em nghĩ là bạn em sẽ không thua trước khi mình. Em nghĩ là bạn em sẽ không thua sẽ không thua trước khi mình. We will just try to match the aggressiveness and I hope the best team wins. And welcome back to MSI 2023 live from the Copper Box Arena in London. Yesterday, two teams qualified for the main event, and it's do or die today in the lower bracket as there are two teams eliminated at the end of the day. And you can see the teams getting ready to step on stage. And I hope the fans at home and here in the venue are ready to enjoy another day of League of Legends. I'm Laure, I'll be joined by GB and Mark D. How are you doing, guys? Are you vibing? Are you happy? We've been Hello. fighting right before this. We're, Honestly, not, we're not on good terms today. <laughs> yeah, today has been a bit of a rough one between Mark and I, but we'll see. Maybe it'll get better throughout the day. All right, I'll try to handle this situation. Yeah, it's going to be uh, tough for you today. today. On the day, uh, hopefully not. Hopefully, yes, actually. We'll see about this. I want to talk about champions first because we've seen some priority picks emerge so far as MSI and what I want to know is which champions are over or underrated or just fit the purpose that we expect them to but there's a trick you will have to guess who I'm talking about three guesses every time let's okay. see if we can get them first one here only one team played me you can play at home also of course guessing this champion so only, only one team played me Nidalee. No. Oh, I thought it was G2 because it... Does only he only get one guess? You, Do I, am I just chilling now? You, yeah, get, you each get one guess and then I I will get the second hint. Do you oh, so I get a guess per hint? Yeah, you can. Oh, oh I should have asked that before. I just fired that one <laughs> off. <laughs> what are the rules of this game show? I don't know. I'll just right. guess. I don't have one. I don't have you one. You don't have one? No. Okay. No. I am a Yordol, a small champion. Trist Yordol. No, multiple people have played Tristana, right? Is it... Have we only seen one of this? Is it Kennen? Yes. You're yes. so okay. Yes. Not, it was a G2, it was a G2 team. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, we we've seen just one because it's been perma ban, guys. But why is it perma ban? And also, is there are there any leads as to champions that could play into this champion because it looks really overpowered right now? I mean, I think there's a reason it's perma ban. It makes a lot of sense. Watching Broken Blade play, you have yeah. a lot of lane prio. You're able to get ahead in your individual matchup, and then usually you're able to turn into a very big late game team fight threat, as you see here. Uh, there's nice build pass. You don't need the zonias anymore. You can just go straight damage. Ooh, I didn't even see that sidestep when that yeah. actually happened. So Broken Blade showing his proficiency. Yeah, in terms of is there any counters to it right now? I think like a lot of teams tried out different stuff. We've seen in solo queue, it's a lot of the AD carries. There's a lot of the control mages up in the top side into it. Uh, mm -hmm. On the competitive stage, we've seen a lot of Jarban, but I'll be honest, we haven't actually seen anything shut this pick down and I think that's the reason it's banned so often. Yeah, you usually need to take some kind of range matchup that can handle it, but then most range matchups are a lot more volatile than Kennen, because even yeah. Kennen that shut down or at least has the ultimate where you can flash in and just like suicide yourself to get some CC when most other range champions can't do that. Yeah, to build draft is also a bit tricky I guess with the counters of Kennen. Second champion we have here, five bans, one game, one win. Five, five bans. bans, one game, one win. So it's not super high presence but it is a target ban against this one team who it got it once. It is high presence uh, if you consider the champion and how much we saw it in previous iterations of international events. Kha'Zix. No. I like guessing on the first one. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just my brain not big enough, you know? It's too small with only this one hint. 
You see, not, I can't say anymore. I already guessed no, it. I know. I'm just waiting. All right, I'm second hint. Yeah. My Q is my signature ability. And... Kazix. Blitzcrank. <laughs> yes. Oh. Okay. Why'd you say Kazix again? It was a joke. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Humor, sir. <laughs> Two O's so far, though. <laughs> but yeah, Blitzcrank, we've seen it more than usual, I feel. And uh, it makes sense in a lot of situations on the bot lane, given the ban rate. I guess, GB, what's your take on the champ? Well, right now, it's just a champion that disrupts a lot of the different Slowest things that you ever. want to make wow. work. <laughs> it's not that slow in game, and that's Powerful. probably also why it's a bit harder playing into as well. But when you're playing Enchanters, he kind of screws you up. If you're yep. playing Thresh, you can't really get that to work. And that's a meta with supports with Aphelios and Jinx. They want the Enchanter, they want the Thresh. So because Blitzcrank exists, that's good. Even if you go Tam Kench, his ultimate now breaks shields too, so good into the Enchanters in that regard. And yeah, just heavy roam presence, like one good hook is all it takes. But at times, can be a bit Feast of Famine, but still teams are respecting the pick quite a lot. Yeah, I feel like... You're selling me on the fact that he's probably underrated, actually. Everyone kind of just bans him in response, like, okay, I'm going to take Thresh because Aphelios Jinx, your best pair with yeah. Thresh, it's very meta. But you can probably play it in other situations. And I forget which series it was, but it was a terrible Blitzcrank performance until the last possible hook on the blind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know exactly which one it is. I forgot the teams do, but yeah, yeah I know which teams you're talking about. It speaks to the fact that, like, you can have a terrible game and still win it for your team on yeah. Blitzcrank because that Q ability is just so. It's just that powerful. one hook that makes yeah. it all counts. We'll see if we see it more today. Last champion we have here. Uh, um, oh, I was about to say the lane. I want three wins, three losses. And Can I, I see that paper there? No, okay. You won't see anything. Three wins, three, three wins, losses. Three wins, three losses. And it's not. Oh, never mind. I'll, I won't. I can't even guess. That's that's too vague. Even yeah, it's really vague. You want to venture a guess or? Yeah, I'll just give it okay. a guess. Is it Jinx? It was released within the last 12 months. Last 12 months. And no, it's not Melio. Aurelion still hasn't. Well, that's an update. Yeah. Yeah. Not Melio. No, no, no. Last one. At least. Uh, after 2021, I forget all the champions that we've seen. There's been Which, like three champion releases in 2020. Yeah, but you know, people will be like, I'll, I'll, they'll say Camille, and I'll be like, oh, that was right. two years ago, but that was like last seven guess. years ago. Last, last guess, last guess. Most played top laner. Oh, Cassante. Thank you. Oh, oh <laughs> wow, this is so, so, oh my god. I'll Thank you. And, and we've seen Cassante in, um, in our regional leagues, and usually it ends up being quite of a bait champion because of the answers you have against Cassante in the top lane. But so, what about here at MSI? See, coming into this international, I didn't rate Cassante very highly. I thought he was very overrated a lot of the time when people play him. It's a feel-good laning phase, but they really struggle to transition that yeah. feel-good laning phase into a feel-good mid to late game. And I think we've only really seen a small amount of people to be able to achieve this. I think Ligorous was a standout member being able to perform on the champion, but there's also other times where it just feels like they don't know the full extent of the champion and what you need to do on it, and you make it looks a bit silly at times. It's a skill issue then. It's yeah. not, yeah. It's not yeah, that it's yeah, overrated. Yeah, sure, it was just sure. EU had the skill issue of piloting it. There you go. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, I can't even say, talk smack back at you right now, but you know, we'll wait further down the line at the top. Well, at least G2 is already in the main stage. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. A bit overrated on the Kessante here. I think you mentioned G2. Yesterday, Hedem and Billy Billy Gaming Eastmore Earth qualified for the bracket stage. And here's a quick outlook of what that means for them. In the bracket stage, the eight teams are divided into three pools, as you can see on the screen here. The pool one and pool two teams will each face a pool three team with the Pool 1 teams being on different sides of the bracket. No teams from the same region can face each other in the first round. So for example, G2 can either face Genji, JDG, or C9. That's yeah. kind of the main scenario. Yeah, that's that's it for the most part. The one thing that stands out to me is T1 being in Pool 3. Someone is going to have to bite the bullet. One side of this bracket is going to suddenly look a lot more difficult based off what we've seen out of BLG so far. The LPL 2 seed is not looking quite as hot as what T1 was looking like for the rest yeah. of the year. I mean, the rest of the year, recency bias, mate, they didn't even win yeah, the finals. No yeah, sweat. Maybe T1 whatsoever. sucks. You're right. Yeah, yeah, there's no they're way. They're not even good enough to be at play-ins. That's the story for next week. But focusing on the teams we have this week, let's take a look at today's matchup and what's at stake for them. You lose, you're out. Win, and you still have a chance to make it to the bracket stage. It's a very long road for any of these teams. Yeah. The fact that there are six teams still alive, all fighting for one last spot. That last question mark, question mark, question mark in Pool 3 is going to be one of these teams, either playing today or tomorrow. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a grind for a lot of these teams, not just in terms of the play style, but also in terms of the mentality. You're mm -hmm. not allowed to make a single mistake, no um, extra chances for them as we already have panned out. And I think for a lot of the teams that had 
a bit of a rough start, the pressure is just even more immense because not only do you have to show your best game, you probably have to go beyond that for some of them to move it that far. Yeah, and this person, and some, some of these persons really want to prove themselves, and especially when it comes to the playing stage. And I want to focus on one specific matchup presented by Mercedes Benz, Audi versus Levi, two veteran junglers facing off in an elimination game. Movie star R7 versus Gam Esports is our first series. The stakes are rising as we enter the lower bracket of the play-in stage. Levi will face off against Audi for their tournament lives in our featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz. Both junglers were able to give their teams leads in the early game, but it was not enough to get a W on the board. Body Slam Flash is available if needed. Master Channel Connect, just beautiful. This jungle matchup will be crucial to the series, with GAM Esports and Mobisar Rainbow 7 having shown aggressive early games that can spiral the game out of control. Speaking of, Shun's actually going to go for the 1v1, but it ain't a 1v1! And Oni says, no! That's my group! There is no room for ever. Whoever loses will be the first team eliminated from MSI 2023. Levi and uh, Odi here, one of the two most veteran players we have here at MSI in the playing stage. They have a lot to prove and a lot of responsibilities on their shoulders to represent the region, GB. Yeah, definitely. And I think both these standout players from their team didn't really leave the mark that they would have wanted to initially going into this matchup. Yeah. I think Levi specifically as a player had a lot of hype coming up around him because we know what he's capable of on the international stage. For Adi though, a bit more signs of life, especially in that second game. But both these junglers today are looking for redemption as they came off a loss. Yeah, I think for Adi, he had that one good Elise game. For the side of Levi, his Gragas was something that we're not used to typically seeing him exactly. on. And there was that one initial play that he made that was quite good in the top side off that first clear. But then the rest of his Gragas gameplay was not quite up to par from what we're used to seeing. You saw that zero kill percent. That is not what you expect out of Levi. He is usually the carry jungler for his team, the one that they build their comps around. To see him not have that level of impact was a little disappointing. It's going to sound crazy, right? Because we've just had a meta that was defined about skipping camps, but I was losing my mind when I saw Levi Whoop. do that, and despite Gam getting that early gold lead for themselves, not just in the top side, but also in the bot lane, they weren't really able to transition it to anything, and you can even see in this clip specifically, Levi on Gracchus looks Flash, a bit awkward. body slam. Wow, it's so uh, slow. Uh, to be fair, there was a dash on Ari, but even then still, right, you can see that it's not the kind of Levi performance you're used to, and specifically not looking at it domestically. And what can we expect from them then coming into today in terms of matchup, in, in terms of what we've seen so far also from both teams? Well, I think, you know, it does speak to Levi having to step up a little bit yeah. because Audi did have a good performance against a very tough opponent. And I think that's the thing for me is like, okay, Levi, you had an oopsie game on the Gragas. That's okay. You have double elimination now, but make sure that you actually come back with the champions that you feel most comfortable on so you can have a big game impact. Yeah, I think for Audi, that's the exact same thing, right? There wasn't a consistent uh, good uh, gameplay, specifically all the time coming through for R7, but they had stints of it, right? I think Audi on the lease definitely showed in the early game when he just went on an early game facilitator. I also think that Bong even surprised a lot of people as well going into the matchup. But you can even see it again. It's a little bit of an overextension coming through as well, but they're still able to punish it. And not only do they do that, he's very efficient in going bot lane into mid lane up to top lane immediately where you also can get Bong ahead. Something that we'll have to do again here today. It was definitely a top side that was actually quite good for R7 in that series versus BLG. Yeah. I was surprised. I thought Very I did not think. Surprise. I thought Bong was going to get dumpstered by Bin. Was not the case. They actually went back. Uh, Miro on the uh, Aurelian Soul winning just straight up the 1v1 matchup versus Gao, pushing him out of lane consistently over and over again. Speaks to the fact that this team, if they can solidify some of the problems in the bot lane in the late game, they can potentially take the series. Yeah, I think if you're looking at one consistent player, you are looking at Miro to be get that backbone uh, for R7 too. He's actually looked quite good every circumstance considered. So yeah, mm -hmm. looking at Miro for R7. I mean, that's the thing. Two solid-ish solo lanes on their side, but what about Gam? We knew what to expect from Gam in terms of aggressivity, in terms of really defined playstyle that they had for years, but this is really not what they served us, GB. I was really surprised to see the game one composition they came out with because that composition was not what we would typically see from uh, Gam. You can see it here in your screen, and there's inherently nothing wrong with it, right? You have double AD carry, you have two AP carries, two to line up for it, and you have to engage. But what was really curious to see about it is that this was not what we usually saw when we were looking at Gam domestically. Domestically, when we were looking at Gam, there were 
we have another uh, conversation coming up, and that conversation specifically is way more focused around the individuals. Levi specifically often getting a champion he can carry on, like a Wukong. We have Alessandro in the mid lane too. You can see it here. It's so cookie cutter into different boxes. Carry top lane, carry jungler, facilitating mid, scaling AD, and then an in initiator on scene. And this is just what works for, G uh, for Gam. Yeah, it's an easier setup as well, because so, when you look at their objectives versus Golden Guardians, they actually got zero. And it was just some turrets that kind of went in their favor, but neutral objectives were completely against them. If you take something with easier setup, like this kind of Wukong, Lissandra, Nautilus, so many more engaged tools, you can actually win a couple more of these fights around these objectives when you're posturing, because the double AD carry setup is, is a little bit more difficult to team fight front to back. It's, it, it, that's uh, exactly it. The ease of execution. Quite often, Gam is a team that, yes, they will get bloody. We all know Vietnam for it. But essentially, what they do is that they get bloody after their first clear. Levi is very efficient. He will often full clear, then look for plays, because he full cleared faster than the enemy jungler, and use that mid lane to 2v2. That mid lane to v2 pressure, they then bridge that into side lanes, for example, Kiai on a carry, or getting these objectives. And that's just not something we saw anything of. Even when they had like top lane ahead, bot lane ahead, they consistently struggled making it work. Going back to basics. Then. Yes, Forget absolutely. <laughs> Definitely just go back, simplify, easy engage, five members, pick them off. And in the, uh, the side of R7, they are a team that never made the main event on the side of GAM. They want to prove themselves again and prove that they can create the surprise and be the troublemaker that we know they can be. And that's all for us here on the desk. Let's send it over to Dagda and Urshin for GAM versus R7. Thank you so much, Laura. Welcome to the Casa Desk. We're bringing you a full Irish once again on day number four, I believe, yes. now of the planes. Yes. Yeah, so we got. Last Chance Saloon coming in now for the two guys. These guys are now looking at a loss each. If you pick up another one here, you're done. You're going home nice and early. Yeah, and that's the big change to this format at the moment. You at least get that opportunity if you get the win to go up against Golden Guardians, try and then win that one to get into the qualification match. But two bit losses and you're out. And right now it's one loss on the board. We'll have to see if these guys can carry it through. And that's the big thing as well is that like you know we kind of really don't know what to really expect from these two guys because you know outside of any kind of better way to put it, these guys didn't really show us what we expected in their first series. They kind of need to kind of bring us back and show us what they can bring on stage. Yeah, it felt like neither of these guys really got that opportunity to show what they were capable of. Gam losing 2-0 to Golden Guardians, whereas on the opposite side, it was not a uh, the best of looks for um, sorry, I'm blanking, 4 7 as well. They just weren't able to get themselves really get going against BLG as well. So I think this is where we're going to have to see exactly what they can bring to the table here. And already, recognizing the Miro had a fantastic performance against Yago on that yes. early assault. They're going to take that one off the board. Yeah, taking that away, it gives you good late game scaling as well. And like you said, plenty of uh, pressure on Yagao, who is definitely no uh, no scuff when it comes to the mid lane matchup. So we've got the bands in. We're seeing the Nautilus kind of creeping up in that priority there. The cannon kind of always has to be on that red side band. But the Annie has been left up. So we'll see what sides kind of want to prioritize that, if any. Yeah, it looks like it will be going towards the AD carry position first, though, making sure that you can solidify either the Jinx, the Aphelios have been the big two, but the Zeri being hovered here at the moment for a style. It's interesting to see, though, that the Nautilus is starting to creep up in the ban list now on that red side, um, especially with the amount of control it gives in the mid lane. Can work out pretty well for someone like Cathy, who's been a bit more of that facilitator style. We'll see if they want to go with a Zaya Rakan. So, do I know they're going to give Audi that Viego? So, again, something that's good at skirmishing. You know the Zaya's on the other side there. So, something that can just kind of keep piling on that pressure when you get those resets. Yeah, I am surprised to see the Viego kind of going over towards Audi, though. Audi, like, he has played a couple of times, but he's definitely been teetering more towards the Sejuanis and the Wukongs and these kind of engaged tools to set up for good fights around both bot lane for Seo, but also trying to get Miro into that carry position that he can be. But not going to be taking that, he wants to try and be the carry himself. And now we'll have to see if that Gragas, which Miro has looked incredible on, is going to continue his way through the draft, or whether it be banned away here by Gam in the next rotation. So they want to go for it here now, but we have got the Leona. Leona fantastic against the Rakan as well, just kind of hit him with the Shield of Daybreak. He can't really do much, and he is very squishy at the first few uh, levels of Engage. So where do you want to kind of go from here is the next question. R7, they're saying, look, we got the first rotation now. We're probably going to be able to pick up a top laner here, something safe in that top lane. So they're going to focus on those bands into uh, giving giving Bong something he can lane against. Yeah, and I mean, Bong has kind of traditionally gone back towards these more tanky oriented picks. So I think they're just saying, hey, look, we want to try and get our hands on something like the Cassante here for him um, and then set him up for a good matchup. And you know that Kiaya wants to try and go towards some of these big carry picks. So just trying to ease that burden there in the top side. And it's actually going to be a swap. It's carries being banned on or seven side, whereas you're looking at the tanks being taken away by Gam. See if they want to try and go for more in that top side again. Both these teams are going to want to try and get their best foot forward in this first game because it is a best of three. You still have a minimum two games, but you got to try and make something work here because 
If it, you don't get a good start, it could spell disaster for the rest of the series, and then you're done, as we mentioned. So the Gwen taking off the board again, like you said, getting rid of those carries, trying to make sure Bong has something that he can just facilitate himself and his team with. Yeah, I am very curious about what this mid lane matchup is going to be, because, again, I think Miro has looked best on things like the Gragas. He's uh, most played as Silas there, just alongside with it. So I think getting some of these melee champions for him are going to work incredibly well, where you can play towards the early skirmishes alongside Adi and trying to get this Viego and also Miru rolling. Whereas on the opposite side, I mean, you already have the opportunity to try and play pretty heavily around the spot side with the Rakan setup. So if Cassie can try and keep Miru in check, he should be in a good spot. But there's that Cassante we were talking about for Bong. Yeah, giving himself something that has good engage, good pressure on the AD carry as well. Should the Zeri get caught out and just kind of taking her out of the fight. We talking about the mid lane matchup as well. Katy has kind of just had a, um, so many champions he's built out. He never really had one specific thing that he loved to play. He did have a couple of them there, but as a kind of like just able to play so many different styles depending on what his team need. We are going to see the Jax going up on that top side, so it is going to be the carry into the tank. And finally, Gam yeah, going to try and lock in Alessandra. Yeah, Alessandra already will be perfect here. You kind of want to try and have that engage tool coming through from the mid lane, or at least something that can set up for a, long, a lot of these fights. And then just also having something that can be relatively safe on side lanes so with the off opportunity to play 1 3 1 and play for sides when it can suit you. But there we go, we're talking about Miru having an opportunity to go towards one of these melee heavy skirmish picks. Well, there's the Silas, and now you've got a pretty devastating mid jungle support if they're able to play through this. Yeah, and it's most played in the regular split of the LLA as well. So something he's very comfortable on. And like you think of the things it can take away, the glacial tomb, the, the quickness, even you know the, the cyclone from the Wukong, lots of things he's able to use as be that engaged tool to help himself out with that strong jungle duo. Yeah, and I think that's where we're gonna see a lot of pressure towards that mid lane. It's like if you can lock down this Silas with the ice club then you get the follow-up from the Wukong. You basically don't get to play the game here as Miru. And Miru has been the carry for this squad. Like, more than 30% of the team's damage coming from the domestic split has come from Miru. So I'm excited to see if he can have that pop-off performance because this was one of the guys I was really keeping my eyes on coming into MSI. We just didn't really get to see him have much of a chance against BLG. We saw bits and pieces of it against Yagao in that game too, where he was piloting the Aurelian Sol, but now this is where he can really step up and show his stuff. I love that. A little bit of sportsmanship between the coaches there, trading the jerseys as both teams know that it's a... Uh it's their last chance, as we always have to keep saying. It's new format, a lot of people don't know, but it's going to be a double elimination. You are now on the loser's side, and it's a long road if you want to keep going, but you're not out until you are out. Game one draft's kind of said and done. Both teams kind of getting roughly what we expected them to kind of want. Good engage tools for both sides. Both teams kind of happy with these drafts. It's more about execution as we come into the game. It's a lot of skirmish power on both sides. A lot of early fights probably going to be the case here as we do load on to Summoner's Rift for game one. Of course, we have got the featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz, Levi versus Adi. So let the crowd just kind of have their... Thing. I want more football chance. That's what I want. <laughs> like, who ate all the pies? <laughs> I know there's been a concerted effort to try and get Darth chance going as well. I really yeah. want the Darth chance. See if we can get 180 going somewhere in the in the day. It's kind of hard though. I don't think anyone's gonna get 180 kills. <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll look for the CS, but yeah. <laughs> already you can see Gam just starting to set up their defensive line here. I think the biggest thing is for Levi again. You can try and play through this mid lane, try and set up alongside Caddy, and then as uh, Goldberg was saying in the desk, lean that pressure then into side lanes like up towards Kiaya on this Jax. Try and get the Jax rolling. So I think a huge amount of this four seven is going to be a case of cool. Can we? slow down the pace of that mid lane pressure. Can we try and find some skirmishes with Adi, Miru, even if we can bring lines into the mix as well, and just make things very uncomfortable. And Adi does tend to try and play down towards the side lane, so if they can get Miru involved as well, it could be a lot of bedlam for Style and Zin in this bot lane. And Kiaya just kind of putting himself in the brush here, knows he's gonna be stronger in that level one, go for a bit of an early skirmish with that counter strike as well. And yeah, make it a little bit difficult there for Bong. Shouldn't be too much of an issue for him just to kind of try and walk away from this one. Yeah. We're just going to see a lot of death, uh, death scraps, procs kind of trading between these two top lanes until the, the map opens up that little bit more. So, we'll wait to see what they want to kind of go for. And again, more and more kind of pressure being put on these junglers and where we want to see them kind of have an impact. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised to see that uh, Levi did start in this bot side. I thought he would try and make his way down to the bot lane, but maybe he's trying to make sure that Gaia can get a decent time up here because Gaia trading pretty aggressively against Bong in these early stages. Level two hit for Bong here. Good side step for Gaia. And if you can keep these trades up, you can actually use that push that you have made for Caddy to immediately roam up towards this top lane and at least starting that slow push into the top side for Gaia could leave that opportunity open here for Gaia. Cool. You see the Xenoblade coming. Dash away there from Style to make sure he doesn't get hit by the feathers, but. 
Oh no, that's the kind of power you can see there. Because again, the Zaya, it, it's a weird one. Everyone obviously sees the Zaya as this big late game carry, but she can have a huge amount of impact in that early game. If you oh. get the right CC, one or two more auto attacks, and Miru would have had himself a solo bolo, but not to be just yet. Everyone keeps their summoners. Yeah, this is actually a little bit of a dire race though for Caddy. Not exactly the trade you wanted to get. And this is what we're talking about. Miru has been absolutely incredible at getting these solo advantages, even against you no know, top LPL team. So now Levi, we talked about making his way up towards the top side, over in the bush. Will Bong step forward for Cannon? That's the question. It's so tempting. You always want to. You don't want to get those minus ones. But I don't know if he's going to die just yet. You can see Bong kind of being defensive with this. Has got the knockback as well. A little bit of a dash, but he's still going to get caught out. Just get the knockback, and they're going to catch out Levi. Only need a turret. Who's forced to flash? Nice defensive move there from Bong and Levi getting punished for what was effectively a 2v1. Yeah, tried to use the clone to get away, but Bong actually just about managed to clip him with the W, so brings him back into the terror, then the flip as well. So nicely done by Bong. And that summoner spell being gone on Levi makes a lot of these further ganks a little bit easier to get away from if you're on the side of Or7. If Audi wants to go for it, both teleports used into that mid lane. Audi kind of moving away through the vision. They're going to try and get the CC down. They wanted to try and catch Katy just before the glacial path. And for the moment, R7 are the ones bringing the kind of pressure. They're the ones dictating the pace in this early game and who's getting what. And it'll be amazing for the LLA to be able to take down Gamma as the desk time talking about. VCS has been a region that has been kind of feared for the aggression that they brought over the years, has been a little bit tempered as of late, but still a region that can cause a lot of upsets, and NLA being able to show that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the VCS with such an incredible performance, and already off to a decent start here, as Miru going to more than likely look for his own reset here, but maybe not. Adi, do they go for the diamond line? They have everyone coming in, flash over, Xenoblade in, seal the daybreak, Bukati gets a good flash, the cat not able to get himself away, perfectly done there by R7, and Kati goes down for first blood. And that's exactly what we were talking about for R7. Get this Leona involved, play for these uh, opportunities around the jungle and the mid lane. Would have liked the kill to go towards Miru, but you're going to be very happy that that Lissandra lost a massive wave. Absolutely. Cost of two flashes, but a huge amount of golden experience gone to the wayside. And again, it's just it instantly from Lions. He just goes, yep, yeah, I'm going in, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Yeah, a little bit separated here. We can see, oh, actually, Bong. I have a Bong from a flash, but is he baiting in? He is! He had Miru off to the side, and R7 are starting to punish Gam. Fantastic roam from Miru. They thought he'd reset. We even called it. He's probably going to go back after picking up the kill, but Miru sticks around in the lane, manages to get up towards that top side. Now, he will need to get a reset off, but in the pot side. They're going in again. They are going to get the sun down, and that's going to be a heal in from Zin. Style now trying to just kite this one back, but again, if the Leona gets the Zenith Blade, you're going to be in a hell of a lot of trouble. And R7, they're building some momentum right now. And the fact that you get this play on a 4 7 on the bot side, forcing the reset from Stahl and Zin means that this Lissandra can't use her advantage in mid. She's already reset, she's got the advantage Level of the push, but here we go. Level 6 has been hit, and there's nowhere for you to hide, there's nowhere for you to go, Katsi. You've already used the Glacial Path, you've already used your Flash, and it's just a matter of who picks up this kill. It is Miro, 2, 0, and 1. And R7 have come out the gate swinging. And this is exactly what I wanted to see from the LLA representative. Fantastic stuff, Audi looking on form, early ganks, early pressure, taking control of that mid and bot side now, will lead them in towards the Dragon, or seven came to play today. I mean, they don't want their MSI to end so quickly, and they're going to get themselves a dragon as well. They've got pressure pretty much across the map, and this is a fantastic showing for the moment. Zin thinking about maybe going in, throwing in a Q or something like that, but again, great, great start there from the LLA. And I think a lot of this is going uh, probably better than expected for R7 as well, right? Seo and Lions oftentimes are the ones that get a lot of the jungle attention from Adi, but the fact that they've been able to take control of this bot side by their own opens up Adi to try and actually play heavily around this mid lane. We even have Lions on the roams. This is where R7 are taking a little bit of a different style from what we've seen them, from them traditionally, and it's looking wonderful right now. And for Gam, they have to try and find ways back into this. Against Golden Guardians, they struggle a lot in those team fights, so maybe they can try and look for picks instead if they can get Cassie out of this mid lane. And that's the thing, you have a load of tools to give you those picks. You've got the Lissandra, you've the Rakan, you can find people out and just kind of CC them until they're dead, but I mean, it's depending on whether or not R7 will give you those opportunities. Is top lane is just going to continue to be that kind of wet noodle fight for the moment until they both kind of stack themselves up. But I mean, for R7, 
just a great kind of, you know, decision making coming in and great cohesiveness from the team to kind of capitalize on a lot of these moments because they're just kind of split second decisions and they're taking advantage of them. And it's only going to compound as well as you look towards the Rift Herald in just a few moments. Adi trying to see if he can make a play on top side for the 30 second waste that he has for that Rift Herald. Yeah, we're going to see them now go all out. The counter strike is good, but not good enough. Sidestep from Katia. Do they look to try and fully engage on this? The sun is good. There's the heartbreaker, but Pong does not need it. And R7 are literally winning in every lane. And this is now dire, dire straights for Gam because you have control for Bong in this top side. You don't have the two ultimates available, so maybe but a little bit hindered to go for the, the Rift Herald. But burning the flash on Kiaia here as well is just wonderful. Really nice stuff from Kiaia at the start of this, right? Manages to flash away from the sun, also getting away from the, the knockback. But just there's too many CCs coming his way and one hit and that's all that mattered. Yep, all they needed was a little bit of CC to get that kill confirmed there. And they lose his flash like you mentioned as well, so... Great from the solo laners and great there from from Adi as well, like running around this map and just kind of being a nuisance and making himself known on this Viego pick. Yeah, and this is where again Adi, as long as he can keep control of this, he's going to be in a great spot. Looks like they will have to give up the bar, the Rift Trial even as we said, no ult on the Viego or on the Kazante means they probably give this up. Bong probably just going to ward it to make sure that he can spot exactly what's happening. But I'm curious if they could maybe make a cross map, but. With the Zaya resetting, it looks like this is just going to be given. Yeah, you're not really close to the Solar Flare. You can see them just kind of pushing in there. Style, just getting that one reset coming in there from Seo. Do they look for maybe a little bit more on the after? Style would be walking in. They have vision on him, but they don't know that Audi is there. So he takes that one in. They're going to look to try and burst him down. The cleanse is only going to stop one of them. And R7 just punishing left, right, and center. Style so didn't even have a chance. I mean, I don't even know if he was in the window shop because you get to move regardless. And now R7 again, three kills on Tamiro in this mid lane. This Silas is going to be so incredibly difficult to deal with as we start to get into the later stage. Plus the fact here, Adi has just managed to take this entire bot side as well away from Levi. So Levi going to try and work with Caddy to move back up into the top side, maybe steal a camp, maybe even look for the dive on Bong. But Miro has TP to get up there if they overextend. Well, Kati got away from the vision, but Bong has a sixth sense about these things and is kind of making sure he does not uh, fall prey to this particular guy. It's a huge wave, so he would love to try and soak that one up, but recognizing he's on the weak side, the police were coming for him, and he needed to get the hell out. Yeah, managed to step away from that one. Miru gonna look for the reset. Caddy will inevitably stop this. Yeah, there you go. So, still though, you're looking at Dragon in a minute and a half's time. You have full push on bot side. I think your best bet here for 7 is starting to try and use Adi and Miru's pressure in mid, lean that into your uh, bot side jungle, establish all the vision control that you want there, and just make it incredibly difficult for Gam to try and move in towards this next Dragon. Like, you can see it already. Everfrost completed here for Miru. If they it's can an look to an yeah. amp tone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, Caddy does need to reset here, so he will be able to go back, but it's more so a case of if Audi, Miru, and Lions move into that bot side jungle, who in the name of God wants to face check that? Like, no one, no one wants to go near. And you can already see Lions and uh, Seo just trying to see if they can get some of that vision established now so you can start to. Uh, treat yourself into that jungle. And this is the thing as well, like for Lions and Seo, Lions has been able to roam around the map, have such an impact, and Seo's not really been under any threat. He's been able to kind of CS up, and yeah, look, he's a couple of CS down, but you take that as the Zion, this kind of matchup, and now the knockback is good! The tower for the assist, the solo bolo from Bong, and R7 are now 3,000 gold up. Yeah, I think Kiai is kind of feeling the pressure here. Feels like he needs to try and make a play, and it goes sideways for him. Bong managing to get him, and now Miru having a lot of tension in towards this mid lane. I don't know if... Okay, he spots in. I don't know yeah. if he knows where Levi is. He wants it, here. though. He wants to try and go for this one here, but he did not know there was a rest of the enforcements. Does get the ultimate off, but I think he's just kind of by himself for this. Will flash, but it feels in vain. And that's just an unfortunate timing there from him. Does give over a kill and a little bit of a shutdown as well. Also gives a lot of pressure, as you say, to the mid lane, but also towards that dragon as well. Looks like Gam are going to group up, see if they can make sure that this will charge. Adi still waiting in the wings. I think you just fall back to Dragon here. Use the fact Miro has no TP and get another objective, but Gam sticking around in this mid lane. They're looking to try and push in this wave before they go for it. They know it's a cannon. Xenoblade would not land for the best, to be honest with Jiffer Lines. He's uh, running the Glacial Augment instead of the uh, Aftershock, so not going to go for it just yet. There's decent vision here for R7. And now Gam will know about it, so they're going to kind of skate their way out of this particular one. And it looks like R7, regardless of the pick, are still going to be able to get themselves a second dragon. Gam just spent too much time in the mid lane. R7 now will get that second dragon for themselves. But again, it was Miro just overextending and Gam able to punish. So at least getting some of that gold back in their favor. But you can see they're still a ways away behind here. No, 
no uh, Everfrost coming through onto Cassie just yet. Although Adi starting to move back towards mid. They really want to keep this pressure up in the Lissandra. Really putting her in a kind of a bit of a hole right now because if Kati doesn't really have the kind of survivability to go for those flanks, because you're gonna want to go in, get your CC off, maybe ult yourself, or use a stopwatch and then kind of you know elongate the fight while everyone else does the damage. If you don't have the help bar for that, you're just not really gonna you're not gonna be able to do anything. And that's the problem because you gave over a couple of these kills early. Miru's just able to out sustain a lot of the damage that Gamma able to put down. You kind of need Zin here to CC him in check, so he's not able to get that King Slinger off or King Slayer off. But it does mean now that you don't have the control for Caddy to move. Miru's actually been the one who's able to get control of sides, and it's now hurt Kiaia, who's 0-3 in that top side. You don't have control for style in the bot lane, and now if you can try and keep this push forward as R7, they can look for the rest of these objectives. Well, Seo trying to see if he can catch Zinni as a Rakan. I think he's pretty damn safe, and I will say, I gotta give uh, props over to R7 and kind of dotting their eyes and crossing their teeth. They're constantly going into their own jungle, seeing if there's a ward there, clearing it out, making sure they're not gonna get caught out by any kind of TP flank or anything, you know, kind of vision control that Gam can kind of bring themselves back. And as much as we're praising so much onto R7, we are gonna start looking at what can Gam do? What can they kind of bring back into this particular setup? Because for the moment, they are kind of coming up short, apart from that pick in mid. Yeah, I'm gonna wait here for a second. Miru, again, a lot of members around this mid lane trying to see if they can help out Caddy. Adi is here. You'd really want lines to start moving up, and he will. But you just have to be careful that you're not gonna get caught out in rotation. And I know that Levi is there, so lines moves himself back up. Everything kind of gets a bit cut. There's no dragon for the next three minutes, so it'll be Rift Tower will be the next real fight. And this is what I wanted to see from R7 was, hey, look, if you can actually start to get control of this bot side, Right, move lines up, move in with Miru, and as a three-man unit, there's very little that Scam can try and contest with. That look, as you were saying, it was great that they were clearing out wards in their own jungle, but you do need to as now start to shift that forward, and this just opens up a really nice opportunity here. We can actually start to actually hold on to this point. Zin's caught. Yes, yeah, Zin is caught, and he's going to be not CC down just yet. They will get the blast going when he pops out. Zin in the air. Miru is around with the quickness stolen. They might try and jump onto him with the glacial path, but they're turning this one right back around. They're going to try and get their own ultimates. On top of this one, Levi will have the Cyclone available to him. Lions will not go down just yet. Theo has joined. Style is here as well. Bong in with the teleport, looking to try and make this one work, but he's being shredded down. Zin looking for another engage. Does not get the knock up. They get the Zen Blade down. They've taken the Style, and he's putting in damage. Style is still working forward as the Jax will pummel down Miru, and they just get absolutely everything. Seo tries to save the fight, but it ends up going Gam's way. It is a very messy fight for more seven, with nobody really sure which direction they're supposed to be fighting from and Gam collapse, they flank, they get the kills they need, and suddenly Gam are back in this game. Huge shift of momentum. Rift Herald will be picked up here by Gam as well, but great to see them there. And I imagine that those numbers were a little higher about 10 seconds ago. Yeah, they definitely were. And look, this is a nice pick coming through, but you definitely want Miru here already. Miru, though, hadn't already shifted across after pushing in the mid wave. Great blast cone there from Levi to actually open up that distance. And from this point forward, you actually have more members of Gam that are coming into position. And watch Miru. Miru starts to move out of this fight thinking, okay, we're kind of done with this as he waits for the TP from Bong, but Lions had already stayed committed into the fight because he was CC'd, so the Leon is now out of it. Then Bong commits, but again, you're not really in position for Sale and Miru to follow up. So this entire time, Stahl is getting a free hit, Gam are getting to kind of rotate members in and out facing their health bars, and they're just slowly but surely whittling down everyone here on Aura 7's side. It's the power of the Rakan, man. He's so slippery. He gets one moment to get out, and you can see just how much his health bar was so close to going down, but just never does. And now Gam, give them old right back into their favor. Well, it's dead even, basically a couple of hundred in favor of R7. We kind of bring ourselves back into this game with a minute till Dragon. And it's a big blunder from R7, because I actually like the idea, which was move in, establish vision control, give away for Miru to start to lean into bot side, get the tower there, do a very similar story to lean into top lane then, as you rotate Seo and lines around the map, but not able to kind of get that across the line now, gives a lot of space for Gam to slow down the pace of this game. They can even look to contest this Dragon that's in 40 seconds time, with now those Mythics coming through across the board, and a lot of those kills going to people like Stahl, so Style is going to get already that Immortal Shuba and a Zeal into his back pocket as well. we got a hell of a lot more scary for the LLA fans here in London. All of a sudden, it went from everything was bright, up, bright and, and beautiful. Now it's going to get a little bit murky. It's a bit thundery now. You've got to be very careful of when those downpours will be coming. It's got to be so nice, though, as the uh, as Gam, like the VCS, because it wasn't looking so great to start things off. Now, obviously, best of three. You, this is uh, another chance if you do go into that game, too. But to be able to bring that back, to be able to find that skirmish, is definitely going to give you a lot of momentum coming into this. And again, this is an elimination game. Like, 
you need to pick up every opportunity that you can. Every small mistake can be a massive opportunity for your opponent, so see what they want to go for. Shirley gets dropped into the mid lane. That's just going to secure that one there with Dragon spawned and ready to be taken. Gam should be able to take that one pretty much as easy as they like. There is a teleport available for Miru, so not quite going in. And again, we're kind of seeing a similar thing when they did last time. They kind of stayed in mid lane for a lot longer than they maybe should have, and now they're kind of walking backwards without that pressure. Yeah, and again, you're not really getting that forward vision that you'd really like to. Now, they will be able to move over and start this up, but Kati has the TP. There are a few wards that are in behind enemy lines there that he could look to TP to. They're going. Oh, also very separated. They're looking for this one here. They do know that is going to have the TP in there. Style already using his dash over the wall. As you can see, Bong in a little bit of a 1v1 there with the Jack. So, Dragon down to about half HP. Gam looks to try and kind of stop the stacks as it is a Hex Soul. Very, very powerful if you can get that early. Looking for this. A little bit of a flank, you won't have the Glacial Path, they will catch out Levi and try and burst him down before he can do everything you know. Jungler, great capitalization from R7 as the fight can really start now. Style just trying to put in damage, but he's got nothing left. There's nothing there for him to do, and Miru's gonna chase them all away. Soul point for R7. Miru manages to get the near, near chains at the end of that, but not quite able to follow up on it, but really good job from R7. Oh. It's actually still Kati going. looking for the chains, just lands down, not pretty really got the massive amount of burst you would require, but now Gam, you can't defend this, you have to leave, you cannot defend this mid lane tier one, and R7 are kind of getting everything there, it's gonna be the land down there, Everfrost gets turned back, and I don't think Miru wanted that. Yeah, yeah, kind of hiding yourself with your own chain there, not exactly what you want to do, but still R7 will take it, right? Three dragons to their name, mid turret down, bot turret going their direction as well, and again, it's coming down to, hey look, when the skirmishes are there, that's where Gam were able to find their footing and find that fight against R7 and immediately in their jungle but when it comes to the full 5v5s just like golden guardians gam can't keep up i was just about to say like we saw something incredibly similar happen to gam against the golden guardians where it just kind of all falls apart they're not really quite sure who they're looking to you know kind of go for and those little mistakes those that lack of cohesion can just be the worst of enemies against something like a team that just you know kind of feels comfortable in those in those skirmishes and for gam now you're starting to run out of options, right? You don't really have the opportunity to look for these picks because you're starting to run out of turret space with everything starting to get pushed in. Or seven are very quickly starting to accelerate the pace of the game. Plus the fact that you now have those two items complete on Miru, like this on his Hourglass, not really going to be able to pick him. Bong completing his Sunfire Cape makes it very difficult for this quite AD heavy, I will say, team on Gam to get through him. I know you've got, obviously got mixed damage on the Jacks and some damage that'll come from Cassie, but um, Bong will still be able to survive a very long time in these fights. And the thing is as well is that you've got the Viego here for Adi, so if someone dies, those resets, those extra souls, those extra abilities that kind of rotate through your cooldowns are so unbelievably powerful for someone like R7 because you know who's great as a jungler? Wukong. Viego could just take that, take the decoy. You're not putting in the right amount of damage. They will get the ultimate down there, Miru. Using the stolen Glacial Prison there on Takati, but knowing that Levi was off on the sides and not going to fully commit. Yeah, it's a nice like opportunity for us to try and go for something, see if they can push mid and then threaten, but I think it's just a case of trying to get these side lanes in control is number one priority for our seven. As long as you can get them pushed in, you can start to look at Adi establishing vision here in the top side jungle, and it looks like Gam trying to set up a pick if you end up overextending here for R7, but they're not actually going to push for it that much. They're going to take it slow, reset, and actually get that vision that they need for the top side. Yeah, look for the top side, but don't forget, two and a half minutes away, we got ourselves a Hex Soul. You can see there, Katsi has to play so, so carefully. He did use the Glacial Path, and as soon as he used the Glacial Path, Miri was like, cool, I'm going to stay in this lane, because I know that if you step too far forward, I can kill you. So, not going to, it's going to delay his reset just for the little bit now, but... Again, great from R7 so far, but we'll see now. Gam do have plenty of options available to them if they find the right opportunities. Yeah, but that's the thing for Gam is like, R7 are the ones that actually have all the cards. They can, yes, go for Dragon, go for Soul, or hey look, we're just actually gonna give that up and we're gonna immediately jump onto the top side of the map, try and take your mid, try and take your top tower, maybe even look for a Baron as well and like just trade sides of the map. So this is where you start to come up against a rock and a hard place for Gam, where the opportunities you have to actually look for the, the more aggressive player, take control, is very tough. Now, we're just kind of happy to ping pong the waves for the moment, just give everyone a little bit of gold. You can see Levi and Adi kind of hovering their top laners. Zin and Lions kind of coming in as well, but they don't know that the Gam jungler is here. They do know the Rakan is here, and it looks like everyone's kind of moving themselves up towards the top side. They're more try Gam trying to secure themselves that little bit of extra standing gold just before this potential dragon fight. Yeah, it's a nice attempt to try and move up here again. 
the problem is, look at the mid lane. You now need Jax to try and come by, which means that Bong is going to be able to push in the bot side. So, or 7 as long as they don't overextend, but Adi Mai, so... That sweeper was huge, but they're going to fully commit to him anyway. He's unstoppable in his ultimate, but can he go down? Yes, he will. They've invested a hell of a lot. They will have the TP from Bong. As all five members from Gan try to make this one work, you don't really have the support here from R7. A good moment there, but it won't be too long until that dragon, he should just be up. I mean, I'm more worried about if they wanted to go for a Baron or something here, just to try and even force more of R7 in, but looks like Gan not feeling fully confident to try and go for that, try and bait R7 in. So it will just be the top lane tower instead, the reset coming through, and it looks like we will get this big fight between Gam and R7 at this next objective. Gold is pretty much even for the moment as well. About a thousand gold, a little bit less in favor of R7. But again, it's those dragons that are so damn important. We are hitting two items on a hell of a lot of people. We actually have the Morel Nomicon there for Kati, and he's got an exhaust as well with that spell book. The big problem for R7 is that you only have the one TP. Uh, sorry, the big problem for Gam is you have no TPs, R7 have the one TP. So as long as Miru maybe wants to put pressure onto this top side, they can kind of look for a lot of these trades that we we're talking about where you go for the tier two and top instead, but Wave's not really in a great position. R7 control River at the moment and Gam trying to slowly but surely work their way through here. No true tank to kind of set this up. They're waiting, Miru is now here. Off to the side, looking for a flank to even get on top of it. Gets jumped on top of by Kiaia. Everyone just kind of goes a little bit wary of what's going to happen. Dragon's been taken very, very quickly. There's 50-50. It's going to be a straight-up smite fight. Levi gets in, and Levi gets the steal. Bong now a little bit too overextended. There's a good solo threat to stop anyone from killing him off. Ring of Frost hits onto four. And how do they follow up onto it? Levi finally gets himself the Cyclone off. They pop down the exhaust. There's a good Feather Storm to draw them all back. But Style wants the 1v1. It's a 4v4 in that top side as they try and make this one work. It's all going Gam's way. R7 are not having the advantages, and they're falling apart. It's all gone sideways for R7, they couldn't quite find the fight. Levi gets the steal, and now with position on mid, Gam, they look like they're gonna go for Baron. Looking like the big purple worm, and honestly, they don't think there's really anything you can do here on the side of R7. So one fight just kind of ships the entire momentum of this game. And Gam, it was looking a bit dicey for them, but they found a great opportunity. And that's where the VCS has always looked good. When they can try and get into those team fights, try and set them up. Didn't work for them against Golden Guardians, but here against R7, we're starting to see that VCS spirit once more pong. Seen off on the side, there's nothing he can do with Sale here. That Baron will go to Gam. Yeah, doesn't have a war, doesn't really have any opportunity to go in, and Gam breathes some life back into this game for themselves. And have a look at how this fight kind of went down, because again, it kind of goes a bit scrappy, but then it, it just feels like Gam just realized, hey, we have the advantage. Yeah, there's a couple of key points where it goes wrong for R7. So Bong try, uses everything on the clone of the Wukong there to try and get Levi out of the, the pit, but that goes wrong. Then Bong's overextended, so then you get the follow-up here from Kati. Great job, on to hitting Miru as he's trying to go in. And watch Sale here, exhaust as he pulls back the feathers. So that damage doesn't really come through in the same way. So three of these big changes in this fight for R7 mean that Gamma are able to find their success here and pick off the members of R7 as they go for the overextension again. Two kills, a dragon and a baron. And that means the world to the back-end staff as well. We come back into live, and now it's what can you do with this Baron as they get themselves back onto the pick? You're going to be able to kind of get that Jax enabled, will be able to kind of push in those sidelines, and there's plenty of standing gold, plenty of tier twos and tier ones that they can still pick up. And that's the thing, once he's get Kaya hitting level 16, which is soon, but here we go. Oh, it might be a full fight, We've got 4v3, I should say, as they do get themselves a little bit of CC down onto Miru, who does steal away the Lissandra Ultimate Cyclone going down the backside, which means Adi cannot get the resets. Miru going back towards his turret, but he's already dead. Double kill coming in for the Jax, and all of a sudden, Gam feel like they've come back to life, and they're just smacking R7 around the map. Gam are looking very happy in this one, managing to immediately get the Bard, immediately get the play on bot side, and they really want to make sure that they are able to get this win. You can see here the win expectancy powered by AWS. It has been back and forth, but what a turnaround for Gan. I mean, they still have Baron for another minute 20. They can at least break open the base here at minimum. These death timers are still fairly decent, but I don't think they're going to overextend too much. They got the hex gates to get out, and they're going to be very happy with this last passage of play. Pretty, pretty still for Gan. Managing to just barely turn this game back in their favor. Or 7 now kind of scratching their heads saying, hey, look, what the hell can we do to bring this back? Yes, you're getting three items soon for your Zaya, but it's not enough from Gam. They're making plays on the side lanes. Overextension from Miru trying to hold on to that bot tier one. Definitely not worth it when you have no control of your jungle, no control over mid. And Gam immediately punished by jumping in onto everyone on Or 7 who's struggling to keep up. But now Adi is struggling to get away. 
Not got much else to kind of go for as Miru looks for a little bit of a 1v1, gets hit by the Glacial Tomb, and a lot more damage off the back of that with Style coming in on the Zeri, and this is just bit by bit, momentum by momentum. They still have 30 seconds on the Baron, and without Miru, there's not really a lot of skirmishing power here, so with a massive wave, they could break open another inhibitor. Or seven are crumbling, and Gam are happy as Larry to try and pick up everything. Starting to move in again onto this top side. Jax for Kiaia pushing in this mid lane, making sure there's just everywhere is going the way they're going for it. They're going to look for the final fight here. They can end the Seo, they would do everything, but it's a good route down. That's a great solar flare there onto Style, who finally takes down the Leona. The Cyclone in as Levi just kind of helps set everything up on a silver platter. Audi cannot get the refreshes. He cannot get the restarts on these fights, and Bong is left on his own. So everyone's going to be there for the side of Gam. He just sacrificed the Rakan, but they're not going to end the game just yet. They don't feel like they can go for it. Yeah, Kiaia bonks Bong, but doesn't manage to actually take him out of the fight, and it means that they will just back away. Dragon in 40 seconds. They're going to try and look to see if they can get another one, but you got to be so careful. Like, a steal here for R7, getting that soul could actually be a little bit dangerous. So G Gam needs to make sure that they're pushing in these waves, getting control over all side lanes before they try and go for this dragon. Don't give R7 the opportunity to really contest you on the objective. Thing. Honestly, I feel like they could have gone for the end there, but obviously feeling that they needed a little bit more time, a little bit more of that gold to be spent. Three stopwatches now on the side of Gam. You've got one for the Jax, one for the Wukong, and of course one for Lissandra, so plenty of delay available to them in this next fight. Three items, though, as we mentioned earlier, on to Seo, so he's got himself up to a nice, very powerful point. So again, it's kind of down to the execution of this next fight. I don't feel like R7 are going to leave their base, though, anytime soon. At what base? Yeah. <laughs> so little left. You've only got that mid lane structure. Yes, you've got your next terrors, but it's not looking too great for them at the moment. And because you've already got Kiaia pushing in that bot side, you've got Miru has to answer. So Caddy Stall, they're gonna move mid. And it makes it very difficult for R7 to really control this because you have so many opportunities, even if Kiaia wants to come across, to look for the flank. Mid tower is very strong, and R7, they're slowly but surely being pushed all the way back. Yeah, and Bong just isn't really that tanky at the moment, quite as weird as it sounds with three item Kasante, but if he wants to try and go for something here, they have got decent wave clear, I will say, now that they've got three items onto your Zaya. They do get a bit of a stun in, they go in, but there's just too much damage. Style's not here though, Style went way too far away from this fight, and now you've got Kiaia finally joining in. They're going to jump back onto Lissandra, and the Wukong are dead. Style gets caught, R7 found the one opportunity, and they take everything from Gam. How in the hell did R7 manage that? They just all in onto Style. Style panics, goes way too far over the wall, and without that DPS there, Gam crumble. Or seven managed to pick up the fight, and you're 40 seconds out from Baron. They can push in all the waves, get control over the super minions that are pushing in, and look to contest that big objective. And the thing is, as well, is that you're getting all these side lanes in check as well. Your inhibitors are, are still a ways away, but you've got time now. You've got gold given over to you, and that's so, so important. That was a 7,000 gold lead. It's still a 4,000 gold lead, but the gold leads don't seem to matter right now, Dagda. I mean, that's the big one, right? Because when you actually start to look across like the items that have been picked up, four items there for a style. You've got nearly four across the opposite side for a Seo as well, but we'll see here, this was just Great coordination between Lions and Bong. Immediate all in at the same time. Yes, Lions gets burst, but Style, watch how far he goes over the wall. No more DPS. And even look at Kiaia. He's not able to get into this fight either. It very quickly turns into a 5v3 and or 7. They pick off the stragglers and then turn for the rest. The fact that Lions doesn't go down either is so key as well. Not giving over any gold. It was a clean fight for the side of R7. 16 kills to 14 in favor of Gam at the moment. Still on soul point for R7. Still three minutes away, but. I mean, like I said, they, or like you said, they've been able to kind of establish a little bit more defensive vision. They're not going to get caught out by trying to face check for the moment, but Baron is on the board. Body spots them coming in. Ooh, TP got to be used there, but Bong might be a little bit too far forward. He gets himself a little bit of unstoppable. Goes in, gets the CC down there. And he wants to go for a little bit more. They're kind of half engaging right now, but they may have caught themselves. A little bit of a fish. Levi's gone down. They're going to look to Kiaia, who has to go golden style, trying to see if he can do something. But now he's been jumped on by Bong. They will lose themselves. Another one. But before the Jax goes down, he takes down Seo. Now Bong looking at 1v3. will stay alive. There's the Zonyas there from Kati as he looks to try and keep this one going for his team. Style is going to put some help over the wall. He's still going. He's still got the damage. And Style is doing just that. He's styling on them. Gam stay alive. A flash away. Finally gets taken down by Bong, but can he survive the rest of this? Because if he goes down, it would be all for naught for R7. Bong needs to get to the defense of his team because the super minions are actually taking the base. Yeah, he needs to get back. He needs to try and clear this out. Does have a little bit of that regen coming through off the red buff, so should be able to take his way back up. But it's an inhibitor. Incredibly close fight. The fact that Star stayed along for so long 
was crucial and now all inhibitor turrets are down and Gam once <coughs> excuse me once more win the fight. Yeah that was so chaotic right there and you can see Bong and Kaya kind of doing the exact same on either side. Kill yeah. the AD carry. That was all that was on their mind but I mean, Style staying alive for so, so long, nearly get himself a quadra kill. And if, honestly, if he kills Bong there, game's over. That's it. You have super minions in the base. That's going to be it. Gaia, yeah, where are you off to? Trying to see if he can get in, gets a little bit of vision. Lines knows that but there was definitely a message. someone in here <laughs> recently because of that control ward. But we're going to look into the replay. So this is where it looks so good for us at the start. Bong plays this great. Actually getting a ton of pressure down. He manages to set up as well for that separation so they can deal with Levi. But watch now Kiaia. Seo thinks he's all fine. Everyone goes, cool, we can leave Kiaia. But Adi misses the stun. Kiaia leaps over it. Immediately kills Seo, which means the style is actually dragged away on the backside from this fight, which just repositions him then perfectly. He's free firing over this wall. The second Adi tries to go in to get him. Again, Adi's stun missed because Style jumps over the wall. And then there's just no, not enough follow up. A great call from his in there to dive in front of his AD carry to block that. And now we're back to live. We're back to live. Remember, so much was used in that last fight. You don't have all those stopwatches that you just use on the side of uh, Kati and Kiaya, but you do have one onto Style. Doesn't have summoners though at the moment, so it's a bit risky. I mean, Dagda with the dragon spawning in 23 seconds, it looks like it's just going to be a trade of dragon for defending the rest of your base for the side of R7. The recall is coming through for R7. Thormail completed for Bong. I'm pretty sure you got the Mercurial Scimitar complete off that reset as well for Sale. So a lot of those vault in the line was starting to be completed here for R7. Now getting control over mid lane. Want to try and get that to lean in towards River, but Gam waiting in the wings. I -oh. In there, you got Kaya there off to the side. He knows that he can catch someone out, but if he gets caught out, he is not the tankiest man in the world. So, R7 not willing to let this one go. There's a double glacial, or excuse me, a double root off of the item, but uh, not really going to lead to anything else. Bong's taking a bit of damage. He needs to regen just a little bit more before I think he feels comfortable going for a full engage. Damn, control river. R7 starting to push forward. They're trying to burst this out, but I don't know. This is going to turn into a fight. This is risky. They're going to drag him down to 6,000. They're going to see Audi over the side. He has vision. He knows exactly what's going on, but now he's a bit separated. So there's going to be Sal getting caught out. He's stunned up, so he's not putting out any damage for the moment. He gets his ultimate down as Levi will be going down very, very shortly. They've gotten Zin off of this. Look at these health bars. They're so, so low. The Dragons confirm for R7. They get that extra boost of damage in this fight. Gam have nowhere to go. They're trying to see if they can get anybody dead, but they just can't do it. And it's going to be every Everybody falling down, the only one left is Style. These fights are so chaotic, they're so spread out. You can see them splitting off into these multiple skirmishes, but R7 managing to keep Sale alive. This time, they will go for the end. This is it, Style. You've got a cleanse and a dream. You've got a hope and pray that you're able to kind of keep these guys off it. It's going to take so much. I will say no Miru, but he's got a TP in 20 seconds, and it looks like R7 want to go for the end. He's starting to push forward, Style risky no Absolutely. i don't think they can do it can he clear the wave it's gonna be so close here we go they're gonna get the clans off him, but he gets knocked back immediately now they get the stasis out of him as well they need to cc him out but style still alive they can't put the damage down finally he goes down seo finally getting himself that kill and it looks like r7 have done it r7 will survive the storm that was gam and r7 are 1-0 up in this best of three and that is exactly it, Ushid. One storm has been survived, but you have so much more still to go. This is a best of three, and it is only game one that Orsen have managed to pick, to pick up. This is a battle of all battles, and I am here for it. It is so, so scrappy, and it does feel like it just comes down to execution. Those small little millimeters that mean miles in the grand scheme of the game. I, it's again, it's coming down to, hey, who gets better position in these fights? Who can manage to stay alive? Is it Sales or Styles? Like so many of these fights are coming down to small plays, but where if you can find that access onto the key carries in the back line, that's going to be the difference maker. We saw Kiaya do it, we've seen Bong do it at different times as well. And I think this is kind of a good matchup so you can see exactly how both these teams want to play. It's, hey, look, can we get control in the early stages for Miru? Let him step up to be a carry as well. Or can we have Kiaya try and carry these fights alongside Styles in the later portion of the game on big carries? And honestly, like, again, there was so much to like from both these teams. I think we got definitely finally got a flavor of what they both can do. Finally seeing Gam kind of come together, get their skirmishing going for them. But R7 in that early game were just all over them, really punishing on some very small mistakes. So both teams, I feel like, will have positives, but obviously only one of them can get the W, and R7 are a little bit happier with that. Yeah, I think for R7 as well, the fact that they got the early control and then started to 
lose out on a couple of these fights, overextensions at times. Like, especially when you're in this situation where you could potentially be your last series here at MSI, it is understandable that you end up overextending at times, but if you can just keep the nerves in check that little bit more, come back in in game number two, hold on to that early lead, it could be all the difference here against Gam. Yeah, well, we're going to send it over to Laura and the analysts to see what they can make of that game. Over to you guys. <laughs> oh. A very interesting game. It was ending. Thank you very much, gentlemen. The first time ever LLA beats VCS at an international tournament. Amazing. It was, it was a hell of a game to do it, too, because ah. I thought for sure it was going to be a clean sweep at the beginning with those insane early games and then just went off the rails uh, and then it comes back. It was a heartbeat monitor to this one. Uh, there was LLA, then a VCS. There was LLA, there was VCS. I mean, it's, it, it was too difficult to really call in this one. There were so many things that was happening. You can see it as well in this post-game breakdown right here. Look at the gold ref. That's it's, the yeah. thing, right? It's going down, it's going up, and it's going it's right back again. down again. <laughs> they, they won the game with a smaller gold lead than they had at 12 minutes. <laughs> Just to paint the picture of how crazy this game was and how big of a lead they yeah. actually had on the side of GAM. Yeah, but I was actually really surprised about the early game. It really felt like GAM just collapsed to the point where I thought there's no way you're getting back into this game. And I will also say, I think the reason why GAM got back into the game was also because that R7 allowed it a bit. But yeah. The early game for R7 was really clean. The mid game definitely needs some work. Yeah, amazing early game, as you said. And I, I want to talk about what we built in Countdown in the sense that we said the solo lanes on the side of R7 were the ones that could help them in the early game and in the game itself. And when you look at the mid lane here, Miru on Silas, fantastic phase on this side. Super clean. The fact that they get this three-man pincer roam because he already got pressure a number of times in that lane phase, going up top side to protect Bong. Once Bong got that kill, he was actually kind of off to the races as well. He started collecting a lot of solo kills in his individual matchup, and then they just use this kind of pressure between their solo lanes, Audi working between them, to snowball what was a pretty significant lead. Yeah, and it felt like they kind of forgot this formula, because this was the successful formula they had in the early game. You play around Miru, you let him dictate the game. Wherever he is, we start some fights. But then they kind of stopped doing that. Miro was pushing mid lane, they invaded on red buff. Suddenly they didn't have their mid laner with all the gold in their hands. They started losing, Gam came back into the game, and then I have a hard time finding one specific word to yeah. describe what the rest of this game was. Hectic, at <laughs> best, let's That's say. That's a good one. Yeah. Like, yeah, let, we'll let, take that one for one, now. Let's pick one, let's say, right for now. But yeah, I mean, when you look at a team like R7, usually getting a lead that early and that strong, it's hard to translate it to a comfortable mid-game, I would say. And this is exactly what happened for them. And we have thought that game was going to win. Yeah, I thought Gam was going to win until this fight here where you had Kiaya split away. They see this kind of 5v4 that they can take. Style also hopped the wall to get out of the fight. By the time he's back in, he is able to get focused down because the rest of his front line have been blown up. Listen, we were getting ready to do a breakdown of Gam winning this, the first game at that point. Basically. We get to the desk, we watch what's happening, and we're like, oh god, I guess we have to go back and prep Let's more for this one. Because these team fights got hectic and <laughs> they came down to a lot of the execution. I think from the side of Gam, they got a bit more split, which was interesting because at first it looked like they had better team fighting tools to play around with, and then they just kind of got picked apart later on. Yeah, I think the uh, side of R7 maybe got a little bit nervous when they threw that initial lead yeah. away. It felt like they started playing on the back foot. But then once they started picking their own fights again, Miro was very good with uh, the kind of combination of the Everfrost into clearing the wave with Q, then going in with his uh, E2. So he showed some mastery of this Silas champion. Absolutely great game out of him as well as Bong. So they managed to bounce back and fall on their feet, but also Gam being... Really not the team we were expected here. And being able to snowball the lead they have, could have could they have ended top? I think they could have. Yeah, I think I think we can actually break that down as well if yeah. it's actually ready here because this Aha. is the one we're looking at where it's looking like they're taking the fight and they might run into the base to pick up a few kills and look to end this one. But let's actually see how it pans out. Yeah, the fact that they kill most of the members of uh, R7 here, excuse me, and it's only the respawning Silas that seems to give them pause. Because they do finish off Bong, I believe, on the turret. Maybe not. Maybe it was uh, two people left alive. Oh, but this is where they just back off. I mean, it's hard to go with that link, but I definitely feel like there was an angle where they could have looked at it. There were very low HP members here in terms of, well, the HP. Um, and they just decided to try and play it safe. Be like, well, we already have a gold lead. We can get back into this game. And, they, well, then it was the fight we there saw was, earlier where they threw it, right? There was also the play later in mid lane where Bong TP'd into the mid lane. And potentially, Kiaya could have just TP'd up to the minion wave in the top yeah, exactly. side and gone for a split push end of the game. It felt like there were a couple avenues if Gam were a little bit more of a, in a killer mindset of, like, let's just end the game right now or flip it. 
it. Maybe they could have done that, but because they kept taking team fights and R7 kept outperforming them, they, they got their way back in the game. You can feel the nerves on both sides. You can yeah, feel the pressure definitely. from both these teams to make it one step further. Here at MSI in the playing stage, I want to look at the draft here, GB, because before we started this game, you said that we have not been satisfied with what GAM has been drafting so far. This right Do you like I this? Was, this? Are you this enjoying this? This was the this? best we could ever see GAM play. I was so ready to gas you up, man, because you were like, I want this exact comp, and it's basically exactly what you got. I thought they were going to win the game. It. I was going to be like, dude, you're so I appreciate smart. it. I appreciate it. We did see the draft come out from them as yeah. well, and we kind of saw it as well when they started their team fighting, why they were comfortable on it. I still think that early game was not like they played it domestically at all whatsoever. Levi still differed from a full clear, tried to go for a play on the top side, and just got knocked on the tower where he had to flash out immediately. And I think that goes there back to some of the nerves you're also talking about. But I also just think it's really interesting because R7 is one of a few teams who keeps picking red side. Now Gam yeah. going to play, uh, pick blue side once again. It's still in the favor of what they want. And I still think there's adaptations you can have in R7. I don't think the side necessarily did a lot for you. Uh, and maybe if you pick it in an instance like this, maybe you pick it with Rakan immediately or something like that. Yeah, we can see what they want to do. I just like seeing that huddle, the bouncing up and down, the energy, like breathe it out. We yeah. should have won that game. We let it get away. We're confident in the draft that we had. Let's go back to blue side, run it again, have a slightly better early game and don't throw once we actually get the lead. And that's the thing for me. The adaptation is going to come from in-game plays yeah. and not especially for the draft. Would yeah. you agree with this, uh, GB? Do we, we want to keep on seeing the same yeah, kind of stuff I, on I both sides? I think you're right on the money there as well. I think there's obviously small tweaks yeah. you can make. I was made, talking about the side itself, but it, in terms of pick order, keep it going for Miro in the mid lane. He just needs to be the one that's set. And then, like, make sure you just follow Miro. Wherever Miro is, that's where you make the play. If Miro is not on screen, you don't make play. I think it's very <laughs> simple for them in early game here. Well, we'll see if the VCS can come back here after the game and if Gan is found, can fight back elimination here is on the line at MSI 2023 do not go anywhere you've already used the glacial path you've already used your flash and it's just a matter of who picks up this kill and R7 have come out the gate swinging in the style and he's putting in damage style is still working forward as the jacks will pummel down Miru and they just get absolutely everything Seo tries to save the fight but it ends up going Gam's way it is a very messy fight from R7 with nobody really sure which direction they're supposed to be fighting from Stace is out of him as well they need to CC him out but Style's still alive they can't put the damage down finally he goes down Seo finally getting himself that kill, and it looks like R7 have done it. R7 will survive the storm that was Gam, and R7 are 1-0 up in this best of three.